It's a Gundam! For Draco here, and welcome back to It's a Gunpla, the show where I build Gunpla. So, and I guess also Gundam 00 slander, since we're continuing the Gundam virtue. So, picking up from last time, we're now working on uh, Nadley's weapons, and then we're going to start the conversion into the Gundam Virtue. Now, Nadley's weapons are actually pretty cool. Uh, the beam rifle and its effect part are really cool, and the shield, it looks cool even if it'd be uh, mostly useless in actual combat, but that's me nitpicking. So, anyhow, so, you know, there's one thing I got reminded of that really bugged me in Gundam Double O, as if that series hasn't been plagued by this, or this whole video series hasn't been plagued by things that bother me about that show. During Season 2, there was a plot point that an innovator was snuck onto a celestial being, uh, snuck onto the Ptolemyos 2, and was secretly feeding data to the innovators. And that's actually a good plot point. Um, the problem with it is, is they never really did anything with it. Uh, they didn't build up to it or anything. It just came out of nowhere, but the problem with that being um, all of the innovators, including Thierry Arde, have very androgynous appearance and unusually colored hair. So, so this young woman with a not a very well developed physique, especially compared to the rest of the women that used to be in on the crew, and are still are, with uh, powder blue hair shows up. Nobody batted an eye. And I don't know if it was supposed to be blatantly obvious to the audience or not. But if it was supposed to be blatantly obvious to the audience, then the writers didn't do enough with it to really make her actions either shocking, harmful, or anything. Instead, she had a relationship with the second, uh, pi the pilot of, uh, shoot. Uh, the original lock-on was killed by Ali al Sashis, And then they recruited his twin brother to pilot the, not the Dynamis, uh, I'm trying to think what the, what that thing's name is. We'll do that one here. But either way, they recruited him that it was the Carudium, or Carudium. And, which, I just love this line of thought. This is children, because Lost Stratos was a talented mobile suit pilot and sniper, so clearly his twin brother would also be a talented mobile suit pilot and sniper. Because it's not like he's an independent person with his own personality, likes, and interests. Because that's totally not how human beings work. But, and so let's dive into this, because now I'm getting on a roll. Also, the weakest part of Nadley and Virtue's design is where they store the beam savers in the knee pads. I mean, if you're going to go that route, why not put them like in a socket on the wrist or something so they just drop right into the hand? Like the Sazabi. Anyway, so back to lock on in, because the girl, oh, and the innovator spy, her name was a new returner. And it's like, I mean, celestial being is like, if they're not aware of the innovators, which the plot point is they're actually innovates and not innovators, and that the double O Gundam turn sets it under the first true innovator, spoiler late spoiler warning but at this point if you're still listening to me these aren't spoilers but anyway so you know she has weirdly colored hair an androgynous physique and a bizarre ass name and it's like it's like no one had any suspicion 
about this girl. And that that bothered me, but we'll go with it. We'll go with that and ignore that. But then, off screen, she developed a... At least I assume she... No, I'm not going to be a dick. It was a she. I think I've sworn more in this video than any other video I've made, but this... I think illustrates how frustrating Gundam Double O is. So she and the Lock On Two start a relationship, and the problem with that is, is it uh, everything to do with it happens entirely off camera. Other than some banter, you don't see them really interact. You don't see them having personal time, getting closer. No, it just cuts to a scene after they got done having sex. And it's like, and the, and the, and, the, and uh, I'm stuttering because it's frustrating. Because, uh, like I said, it's just very frustrating because it's telling and not showing anything. It's just telling us they developed a relationship instead of showing us the relationship. Again, and with how frantic season two with its pacing, they probably had to cut it. But in that same vein, uh, I actually think they could have cut most of the Earth Federation uh, or United Nations, whatever they were calling themselves, battles in the first half of the season and just made the Innovators the main enemy from the get-go. But again, I'm critiquing a show that's already been made, so yeah. But... I'm still going to critique it. And so to turn Nadley into virtue, we're, first thing we're going to do is pull off uh, Nadley's hair and its neck beard. If this didn't cost so much, I actually, I actually would like to buy another one of these and start customizing it, but this one's a little too expensive. Now, if they sell a Nadley by itself, I have a cool idea, but I'm going to keep that to myself. And I have to appreciate Virtue even has its own V-Fin that just snaps over the old one, whereas on the original high grade, you would just pull Virtue's V-Fin off and put Nadley's on. So, anyway, so continuing my thought from before, um, and so the way they handle that relationship between Anu and Lock-On, because they basically, everything happened off camera and they bum-rushed it, there's no emotional impact. His whole breakdown about her being killed after she betrayed him, you know, lacks weight and depth because they de the, the, the relationship basically... They hinted it, and then, like, an episode later, she betrayed him. And now I'm having a lot of difficulty with this, but that's because I don't have tiny raccoon-like fingers like the greatest technician that has ever lived. And if you use TikTok or YouTube shorts, you'll know what I'm... You might get that meme... Anyway, so yeah, and, 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 and you know, and the biggest thing I have against that whole thing is the battle with uh, Anu and when she betrayed them in the rest of Celestial Being. It was actually well choreographed, it was well written, and it was intelligent. It was really well done. But that just deflates it even more that this is the part that was done well and then the rest of it was just... <laughs> um, and maybe a lot of this happened in uh, side novels. Or maybe it happened in manga companions. But I, I give it the same criticism. I give Bleach the same criticism because... Ichigo and Orihime's relationship 
just kind of manifests out of nowhere unless you were reading the light novels. Because their entire relationship builds in the light novels. Um, whereas, and now the anime actually did this and the manga didn't, but the anime had a strong hinting of a building rom romantic relationship between Ichigo and Rukia, and it was a creation of the anime staff, but it was actually well handled, the problem being that they had to drop it once uh, Tight Kubo basically said, yeah, that's, uh, that's not gonna that's not how it goes chief but at least in that or at least but and it's the same thing it's just frustrating especially for an American audience who doesn't get all the supplemental materials especially Gundam 00 which came out in 05 did it come out in 05 Oh, it came out close enough. But either way, 07, and in America we get all the final stuff, so we still wouldn't have gotten the whole story. So, either way, it's frustrating, and in my opinion, it was poorly executed. And what, and like I said, I, I really frustrated about this because it was, there were, you could see they put a lot of thought and effort into it, but it amounts to nothing when everything happens off screen and the audience can't see it. I had that argument with somebody in a comment section about about that and it's like some days it's like, am I the only one seeing this? That none of this happened in a media where I could see or appreciate it, so how is it well executed? Anyway, uh, now one thing about this, I did do some line work and stuff, and on its knee pads, there's actually a line. There's actually some lines that could use some line work, but I'm not going to actually line it. Just like I'm not doing line work on the torso, because for the most part. Vir mine's going to either be in virtue or it's going to be on a special stand that has virtue's parts floating around it. So, you know, I might revisit that and add more lining, but given that, I'm kind of leaning on not uh, doing any more lining. Now, I get that they did this for anime accuracy, the way this some of this attaches together but I think the high grade 1 to 100 virtue did the entire armor gimmick much better much more stable but I actually had a similar issue with the dual Gundam and its assault shroud the master grade of that is the assault shroud did not want to stay attached very well But it's kind of one of the things where the more anime accurate you get, the more you have to sacrifice reality because these machines, these mechs aren't engineered to work reality. Although they used to be. But I don't want to rehash my whole rant about Gundam 00, them supplementing, uh, supplementing logic for magic. Because there, because somebody actually, and a lot of the, I don't, I was talking to one of my friends in person about this, and they were actually arguing with me that the Minovsky particles from the Universal the Universal Century are the same thing, and I had to look at them. Well, I must have looked at them like they had three heads when they said that, because in the UC, Minovsky particles do one thing and only one thing. They uh, they uh, ref uh, they reflect energy. 
and that's why they're able to sustain uh, fusion reactors. That's why they sustain beam weapons. That's why they black out communications. Um, what communicate uh, non laser based communications. Um, that's why the mobile armors can use them to float in the air. Um, and it's all because they, they reflect energy, and motion is kinetic energy. So although I think they're kind of pushing, uh, pushing logic on that one, they're not wrong. And that's the big difference, because like I said before, GM particles in canon, they block communications, they allow communications, they stabilize energy, they're a side effect of a, a solar reactor producing energy, they cause cancer, they cure cancer, they can be used to stimulate the body to regrow lost parts, they turn humans into psychics, um, they facilitate the communication of an organic life form and a living metal uh, life form. They allow you to somehow dissolve into particles and reform yourself with a thought, which there's a term for being broken down into particles. It's called being disintegrated. And yeah, there's no coming back from that, but that's besides the point. Um, Let's see, uh, besides all that, um, let's see, uh, they can be used for weapon purposes for destructive uses. They make blades sharper somehow, etc., etc. Versus the Minovsky particles, they only do one thing, and it's just how, they, uh, how you use that one thing. Because a lot of the stuff GN particles do made perfect sense until they start causing cancer, curing cancer, depending on if they're green or red, that they somehow cause humans to turn into psychics, that they somehow allow quantum communication. That's where you lose me because it's like that the physics of that don't relate to the other stuff it does. I mean, at this point, I'm going to say that GN particles can be used to make a delicious turkey dinner. I say that, and they probably can. So anyhow, we've got the head and the, and the front of Virtue on Nadley, and suddenly, suddenly it looks more like John Goodman. But that's besides the point. Thanks for watching. See you for the next video.